Welcome back to our video class here at CSEC Math Tutor. In today's lesson, we are going to be um, focusing on how to calculate the area of circles and the area of sectors of a circle. And so our objectives are exactly that. One, to calculate the area of a circle, and two, to calculate the area of a sector. For the remainder of the lesson, we're going to be looking at some CXE questions, past questions, in which the area of a sector is used and in which the area of um, a circle is used, and also show you how these questions may also appear on the multiple choice questions, question papers. So let's begin by looking at first the area of a circle. So how did we get the area of a circle to be pi r square? Well, um, let's say, for example, you take your circle and you cut it up into many, many slices, equal slices, and then you take those slices and you arrange them in an order such as this, where you alternate the ends at, at the top and the bottom here. So this entire circumference, um, remember the circumference, you can calculate the circumference of the circle by using the formula circumference equal two times pi times radius. So this entire circumference becomes cut in two. So that one end, because half the ends are on this side and half the ends are on this side, then this side becomes pi r, and this side becomes the, this, this, each of these is a, is a radius, so this is the length of the radius. And theoretically, if we could cut these slices small enough, then our shape begins to approach what we call a rectangle. Now, because pi is irrational, it is never technically possible to make a circle into a rectangle. However, the area of this um, rect uh, of the shape would get sufficiently close to a rectangle so that we can actually calculate the area of the circle using this idea of a rectangle. And so because one side is pi r, and this other side is r, and we know that we can find the area of this using base times height or length times width, we can say here pi r times r would give us an approximation for the area of a circle. And so we have a formula that says area is equal to pi r times r, which gives us pi r square. And that is how the formula for the area of a circle comes up. We can use that formula to do many things, which is to calculate the area of a circle or to reverse and calculate the area of the radius of a circle. So in this question given right here, a circle has an area of 75 square meters. What is the length of its radius? So we know that then um, when we say pi multiplied by the radius square, we end up with the area. And because that is true, then we can say in our case, pi times radius square is equal to 78. Point five. Now we can um, do a simple division here by dividing by pi and say that r square is equal to 78.5 divided by pi, which is using 3.14 in this case. And r square is therefore equal to 78.5 divided by 3.14. That should give us 25 and then we can find our answer to r by simply finding the square root. So r would be equal to the square root of 25, and that would give us that we would have a radius of 5. So we could reverse the formula to find um, the radius, as well as use the formula to find the area of the circle. Now let's look at a very popular question that came, on some, came in an um, exam some time ago. And in this case, we have what we have is uh, two pizzas small pizza and a medium pizza and both are not drawn to scale and the question is is a medium pizza twice as large as a small pizza and use calculations to support your answer so if we're going to decide which pizza is bigger then since a pizza you're actually dealing with the surface of it then we're actually dealing with the area of the pizza so what we need to find is the area so we have a small pizza with a diameter of 15 and a large pizza with a diameter of um, 30. so the formula being that area is equal to um, pi times the radius square we're going to use 3.14 here then 
we actually have 3.14 times half of 15. Half of 15 is 7.5. Remember that um, the formula uses the radius and not the diameter. So you'd have to divide the diameter by 2 to get the radius, which is um, half of 15 is 7.5. And punching that in your calculator, 3.14 times 7.5 square gives us 176.625 centimeters square. So this is the area of this small pizza. Applying the same thing here, the radius of this one is half of 30, which would be 15. And so we use pi times the radius square gives us area and therefore um, 3.14 times 15 square let me just write that a bit better 15 square and punching this in your calculator you should get 706.5 centimeters square so the question is is a medium pizza twice as large as a small pizza and the answer to this question would definitely be no because comparing the sizes you look at a small pizza a small pizza has a size of 176.625 centimeters square and uh that's a small one and a medium pizza has a size of 706.5 centimeters square so it's definitely not twice because if we multiply this number by two we will definitely not get that number what it is actually is way bigger because if we divide 706 point five um by 176.625 then what we actually get is four so this pizza is actually four times as big as the small as the small pizza and not not even twice so that's how we'd go about answering this question and giving the um calculations to support your answer so a medium pizza medium pizza is actually equal to four times the size of a small pizza if you want to write it out and argue it that way. And, and so that's how we use the circumference, the area of a circle to, do, to answer questions like these. Let's move on to another one where we're going to look at the area of a sector. And in calculating the area of a sector, a sector is just a section of your circle that is cut out from the circum from the center to the circumference. Um, imagine it being a slice of a pizza or a slice of cake. Um, where the cake is round and you're looking down at the top of it. So the angle over 360 times pi r square is the formula that we use to calculate the, the um, area of a sector. So if we wanted to find the area of this sector here, then we use that formula to determine it. So we can simply go ahead by saying the area of the sector would be equal to the angle. The angle is 55 over 360 and we're going to multiply that by the area of the circle which is um, pi 3.14 times the radius square the radius is 5 so we have 5 square so we have 55 over 360 times 3.14 times 25 and once you punch this into your your calculator it should give you 11.99 and we just round that off to 12 centimeters square so this would be the area of your sector here 12 centimeters square now let's go on to see how these questions are used in um past quest past papers and see for example this one says the diagram below shows the cross section of a prism in the shape of a sector of a circle of radius center O and radius 3.5 and the angle at the center is 270 and by the angle at the center what it means is the angle on this side is 270 degrees that is so because this is a right angle cut out and the circle has a angle measure of 360 degrees so 90 from 360 would leave us with 270. There are a number of ways to answer this question they want us to use pi as 22 over 7. Um, we could find the entire circle and take out this piece because this is actually a quarter of it. So we could do that. Or you could use the actual formula for um, 
area of a, of a, of a sector. So let's do that one first. Let's say the area um, of the sector is the angle over 360 times pi r square, and they want us to use pi r 22 over 7, so the angle is 270 over 360 times pi, which is going to be 22 over 7, times the radius square. I'm going to write this 3.5 as a decimal, sorry, as a common fraction. Three and a, three and a half is the same thing as 7 over 2. And this is squared. So 270 over 360 is 3 over 4. And times 22 over 7 times 22 times um, 7 over 2 times 7 over 2. We can do a cancellation there and a cancellation here. And so what we have is 3 times 11 times 7. And that is divided by 2, 4 is 8. And once you do that calculation, you are going to end up with 28.875. Of course, you didn't have to go through all of that. You could simply type it into your calculator and get your answer. So the area of the sector here, 28.875. We could round that off a number of different ways, centimeters squared. We could round it off to the nearest whole number being 29, or we could round it off to different numbers of decimal places or significant figures, depending on how the question would ask you. So this is almost 29 um, centimeters square. So we're going to approximate it to the nearest whole number and leave it there. You may also come across questions where the diagram is embedded in a different diagram. So here we have two diagrams. We have the question saying that the figure OAB not drawn to scale, represents a flower bed, OAB. Notice that you have a triangle, and notice that you have a sector. And the radius is 10. And one, the, 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 the triangular region is planted in roses. And the segment between the triangle and the sector is planted in marigolds. So this section here is planted in marigolds. And so what the question wants us to do is to find the area that is planted in marigolds. And so in working out this question, the first thing that we want, we want to observe and, and pay attention to is that there are two different diagrams. One is a sector, and the other is a triangle. And notice that the, the, the sector is actually bigger than the triangle. So we could actually go ahead now and say in order to get this shaded region, we'd have to subtract the area of the triangle from the area of the sector if we wanted to find this, this shaded region right here, um, the, the marigold region. And so in using the area of a sector, we'd have 36, that's the angle, over 360 multiplied by pi, pi is 3.14, times the radius square, the radius is 10, so it's 10 square. And the triangle, we are going to be using the formula half a, b, sine c. So the triangle ends up being half times a, and b are the radius in this case, so it's half times 10 times 10 times the sine of the angle, which is sine 36. And so let's now let's do our calculations. So 36 over 360 ends up being 1 over 10. So 1 over 10 times 100 times 3.14 turns out to be a simple calculation. 10 into 100 is 10, and 10 times 3.14 gives us 31.4. Um, meters, square meters, so that is for the area of the sector. And now we need to punch this in our calculator and get the area for the triangle. And half of 10 times 10 times sine 36 means that we have 10 times 10 is 100, half of 100 there is 50 sine 36, and 50 sine 36 
according to the calculator, is 29.4 centimeter um, square. So the, the, our, our marigold section is the difference between those, so 31.4 minus 29.4 meter square, and that gives us an answer of just two um, meter square. So the area that is bound between the triangle and, and the, the card here that is planted in marigolds is actually two meter square. So look out for these questions that tend to pop up on your paper too. Sometimes they're mixed with all different shapes. Sometimes it's squares or other things that you may need to apply more than one formula to get out, but that's exactly how you go about doing them. Note the, note the shape that you have and apply the correct formula to finding what you need. And these two questions are questions that appear on your multiple choice paper. No, on your multiple choice paper, notice this one. It says A or B is a sector of a circle such that the angle is 72 and the radius is R. Now, what represents it? What represents the, the area of this sector? Remember, it's the angle over 360 times the area of the circle, which is pi times the radius square. And so the only thing here that we need to divide out is to determine what 72 divided by 360 is. And 72 divided by 360 is actually 1 over 5. And so when we cancel this out, we see that this is just 1 over 5 times pi r squared. And that would mean that our answer is C. In this diagram, which also pops up on, on CXE papers from time to time, we notice that the, there are two concentric circles. One has a small r and one has a big r for the radius. And we are asked to find the area of the shaded region. Note that the area, the area of the shaded region is the area between the two circles. Now the area of a circle is given as, circle area is given as pi r squared. So there are two circles, one big, so let's say a big circle. And then we're going to subtract the small circle. So the big circle has a radius, a big R. So we're going to say pi times big R square minus the area for a small for a circle is pi R square. And here we're using the small R, that small R for the inside circle. Now what is common between these two? Well, we actually see our answer here, pi big r square minus pi small r square. But sometimes you can actually factor it out because the pi is common. And so you can factor that out and say r square minus small r square, which is also possible. So the, um, the area of a circle and the area of a sector are something that you need, are things that you need to pay attention to for your CXE paper. The um, appear very often and they will definitely appear on the multiple choice paper as well. That's how you go about finding the area of a circle and the area of a sector. That's how you apply them. Until next time, thanks for watching and continue working hard.